Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this is my Walnut Waterfall End Table build. Uh, if you don't know what a waterfall table is, first off, uh, it starts out as a single slab, and then it's cut in such a way, allows the grain to flow 90 degrees like a waterfall. What's a little unique about this one is we have a single leg in back that we did a waterfall joint on as well, so the grain continues 90 degrees on the leg. Uh, which was actually my wife's idea and as it turns out she decided to keep this table So this one isn't even getting sold. This was my first waterfall build. It went really well I'm gonna go through all the steps I did to make it. I'm gonna go over uh, how I got the joint uh, The glue I used uh, Most importantly for me was the finish I used how to get a actual perfect finish in your garage uh, In a dusty environment and a finish that's gonna not water ring, get spot, things like that. So I'm gonna go through all those steps. If I left anything out, please let me know in the comments. I'll get to all of them that I can and enjoy. So you can obviously do a live edge waterfall table for this particular table. I didn't want a live edge, so the first thing I did was square it off. Next thing I did was make my first 45 degree cut. And after that, I flip it around and I cut the other 45 and this is what gives you the waterfall edge so that it looks like the grain is continuous on that 90 degree joint. So there's a few different ways you can make this joint and the easiest for me is going to be to use my Festool Domino. If you don't have access to a domino and I understand most people don't, you could do uh, dowels with the little dowel pit and centers and they won't be quite as easy but you can definitely get the job done. Whichever method you decide to use, always do a test fit before you glue it up. And when you are ready for the glue up, it's always a good idea to add this painter's tape to that joint. That way the glue won't sit in that corner, making it impossible to sand out. You can see here, I'm also using an epoxy instead of a traditional wood glue. And the reason I'm using an epoxy is because there's not gonna be a ton of clamping pressure on this joint. So the epoxy is gonna give you a little better adhesion on a joint like this. And you can see here I'm using my Bessie Parallel Clamps. Uh, they are a nice clamp, but really any clamp will do. A pipe clamp would be just fine for this type of joint. Just make sure you keep that joint at a perfect 90. After the epoxy is cured overnight, you're ready to start sanding it. Just uh, don't try to focus on that corner so much. I know that's where the mess is and you're gonna wanna spend all your time just sanding that, but you wanna keep the top very, very flat. So I go back and forth and I use a scraper here to help uh, get a little bit of a high spot and just nice and even pressure across the whole top there until that epoxy disappears. So the process I did to build the leg was essentially the same as the top. I did a five and a half inch rip right here to get my straight piece. And from the table saw, I went over to the planer. This piece was already very flat, so I didn't need to joint it. So I just ran it through the planer until I got the thickness that I wanted. And you can see here, just checking for flatness. Perfectly flat on both sides. Here I'm gonna set up the 45 degree cut. So I zeroed it out on the table base. And there is a 0.2 margin of error in this, so as long as I'm within that, it's as close as that gauge can actually get. And from here, I'm going to do the same process as I did on the top, where I'm going to make my initial 45 degree cut. And then I'm going to come over, make my second 45 degree cut. And with this miter saw, it's always a good idea to make these shallow, short passes. It'll prevent the blade from binding. Now I'm going to use the domino again to set up that 45 degree waterfall joint. I decided to experiment with a house wrap tape here, which I use on the forms for my epoxy river tables. I didn't really like it quite as much. It left a bit of a residue behind where the painter's tape didn't. It does provide a little bit better uh, 
protection from that epoxy seeping in. Nothing really wrong with it. I'd probably use painter's tape again though. If you do decide to use an epoxy, don't use one that's like a five minute cure time. Give yourself one that has at least 20 minutes or so to work with. That way you can really take your time with this joint. And you see here, I had to adjust it a couple times. I'm using a pipe clamp there on the top joint. Checking for square. Still not quite there. You can see I didn't even have my parallel clamp parallel, which was part of the problem. But once I straightened that out, squared it right up. A good tip is to remove this tape before the epoxy is completely cured, but after it has set up, if you wait too long, the epoxy will have completely encapsulated the tape, making it nearly impossible to get off. Even if your epoxy has, say, a 12 hour cure time, I like to give it a full day before I start really uh, applying pressure to it. And I decided to sand this entire piece to 320 grit before gluing the leg on because it's going to be really hard to sand into those joints. And the steps I used is I start off at 100, 150, 220, 320. You can go higher with this finish I'm using, but 320 is the look I was going for on this one. And I also like to make a pencil mark uh, between grits and that way you know you don't miss any spots. If you really want to set yourself apart from most DIYers is go buy yourself a 1 32nd roundover bit. Most people just hand sand that corner and this roundover bit gives you a really perfect, really professional look opposed to uh, hand sanding. For gluing the leg on, I'm going to use epoxy again and the end grain soaks up that any type of glue, epoxy or regular glue, it soaks it up like straws. So I like to let it set for a few seconds, check the dry spots, and then apply a little bit more. Can we wipe something for you? No. You can see here I set the uh, tape outline up uh, to prevent that same glue from seeping out, making it hard to sand off. Will really save you a ton of time in the end. Again, with the domino joints, just clicked it into place. And you don't need to over clamp the epoxy. You actually can squeeze too much of the epoxy out and make the joint weaker. So just nice snug pressure is all you need. And you can see here, I'm just taking the tape off again before the epoxy completely cures. I've made this mistake before and I'm really gonna try not to do it again. So a lot of us on social media like to pretend like we never make mistakes, but we all do. And I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to address one of these common mistakes. Is this is just CA glue or commonly known as super glue. I mix it with a little baggie of walnut dust that I just keep on hand. And you're gonna see some tiny little gaps in this joint. And this CA glue and walnut dust is gonna help fill those tiny little gaps, making it appear like it's just a perfect joint. And once that glue is dry, you're ready to sand it. Just to make sure, again, not to focus too much on the corner, just like you did on the top there. And when you do go in there, just give really, really light pressure with a pretty high grit. I think I did 320 grit here. If I hadn't used the tape that I experimented with here, I wouldn't have to do all of this cleanup of the tape lines. It wasn't too bad to get off. Uh, since I did sand the entire piece to its final grit, all I had to do was clean that off and then uh, blowing it off here with an air nozzle, getting ready for finishing. I used to dread the finishing process, but since I've discovered Odie's oil, I absolutely love it. It's my favorite part of the entire build. When you get your Odie's, stir it up real good. Just scoop a little bit on. 
That's probably even more than I need. And I'm using a Bondo trowel here to just spread it out, let it soak in nice and even. There's not really a wrong way to do this. You can see just how pretty this looks. You don't have to apply it with one of these trowels. Uh, some guys actually use a credit card. Uh, you can even use just a cotton cloth or one of those white floor pads. Just cover the entire piece with it before you wipe it off. Here's the white pad I was referring to. And for the sides and corners, hard to reach spots, I like to use these white pads because they really get in there nicely. I let the oil sit on there for about an hour and I use these cotton terry cloths. Those are the only thing you should really use to remove this Odie's oil. Don't use the lint-free cloths. They actually don't work as well. Just make sure you get every last bit of it off. Totally optional, but if you want to add the Odie's wood butter, I feel like it adds a little bit of extra protection and also gives a little bit more of a sheen. And you apply this in the same way. You see I did this on my way out to the gym is how easy this stuff is to apply. Same as before, waited about an hour, maybe just a little bit longer this time, and used the cotton terry towels and wiped every last bit of it off. You can really use it pretty soon after applying it. I like to wait at least 24 hours, three weeks before you want to start dumping red wine on it. And here are some of the finished studio shots I did of this table. I was pretty pleased with it for my first waterfall table too. I am definitely not a professional photographer, but I've learned to take some pretty decent photos in my garage with a white uh, photography paper backdrop. If you have any questions about uh, what camera I use or the backdrop or anything like that, uh, be sure to ask me in the comments. I'm happy to give any tips I've learned along the way. Okay, that's my whole build. Thanks so much for watching. If I left anything out, please ask me in the comments. I'll answer any questions you may have. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Thanks.